fire. So this thing has gone from the beginning of alpha being a slam, spam, whatever you call it. It really had a decent few adjustments. The only major thing that I can see with this is haste may actually be extremely important for the simple fact that your main rage generation is going to be through your melee swings. Is that going to be yes or no? I'm not 100% sure right now, but so far this thing is playing out pretty damn well, at least in short windows. Longer fights, again, you're going to need something because the rage generation really kind of sucks. But let's go ahead and move right on to the actual abilities. Yeah, yeah. Here we are looking at the uh, the spell book. Gonna take a look at what abilities this thing actually has. Very first one in there. It's gonna be Battle Cry. Your one minute cooldown, and it increases critical strike chance by 100% for five seconds. Obviously, it's going to be a well timed ability, and you definitely want to have enough rage to end up dumping as much damage as you can in that five second period. Berserker Rage, one minute cooldown, go berserk, removing and granting. Immunity to Fear, Sap, and Incapacitate effects for 6 seconds. Uh, still works good as a good uh, general CC break. Bladestorm. No longer a talent. Baked right into the spec. As you can see, no talent ability here. So you, this is talent, that says talent, because those are all talents. But this is now part of your core abilities. Become an unstoppable storm of destructive force, striking all targets within 8 yards for a high amount of physical damage over 5.6 seconds. Uh, during this time, you're immune, immune to movement impairing and loss of control effects, but can use defensive abilities and can avoid attacks. 1.5 minute cooldown. They did up the cooldown from, uh, I believe it was 1 minute in alpha, and now it's 1.5 minute. Charges here. Charge an enemy, rooting it for 1.5 seconds, generates 20 rage. Remember that because you are a rage starve SOB. Uh, haste is probably going to be pretty solid on this spec just for the simple fact that the melee swings are the main way that you're going to end up building up your rage, except for charge. Other than that, there's no fucking way. Part of my French there. So, you've got Cleave. 10 rage, instant, it's back, 5.56 second cooldown, normally 6 reduced by haste. Strikes all enemies in front of you with a sweeping attack for minor physical damage. For each target up to 5 hit, your next whirlwind deals 20% more damage. So you can get, uh, if you use this, you hit 5 targets, you're getting 100% increased damage off of your next whirlwind. Pretty decent little gameplay choice on there in your AoE rotation. Then you've got Colossus Smash. This is your bread and butter. This is what your whole entire spec is based around is this damage and its windows. 45 second cooldown, smashes the enemy's armor dealing medium physical damage and increasing damage you deal to them by 71% for 8 seconds. Normally this is 15% but it is increased through your mastery and we will go over that here in a few minutes. Commanding Shout. Let loose a commanding shout granting all party or raid members within 30 yards 15% increased maximum health for 10 seconds. After this effect expires the health is lost. If you know a large AOE ability is getting ready to come out, you can use this. It's going to do the same amount of damage to you with higher health. And basically, in theory, it's going to reduce the actual overall percentage of damage. Great raid utility on this ability. Three minute cooldown, though. Die by the sword. Three minute cooldown. Now, this is going to give you the parry chance like it normally does on live uh, by 100%. But it also reduces all damage you take by 30% for 8 seconds. So they added in Shield Wall into this, uh, your main defensive, and it ends up helping out quite a bit. So this is not only just a parry chance, but this is an overall damage reduction cooldown. 3 minute CD, another rough one. Execute, you and Shadow Priest are the only ones with one left, so enjoy it warriors. A decent amount of physical does a decent amount of physical damage and consuming up to 30 additional rage should deal up to a really high amount of additional damage on top of it. This is your hardest hitting ability after 20% health on any target. When you get into execute range, make sure you're using this. Again, it only costs 10 rage, but it can use up to 40 rage to really hit extremely hard, especially if it crits. Hamstring, 10 rage, 1 second cooldown. Really small physical damage, and it's also going to reduce movement speed by 50% on the target for 15 seconds. Not a lot of PvE use out of this one. I mean, it's more or less probably going to be for PvP to end up slowing somebody down and keeping them in a 
and beat down positions, but not a whole lot of PvE use in this. Heroic Leap, 45 second cooldown, leap through the air towards the target location, slamming down with destructive force, dealing, dealing very minimal physical damage to all enemies within 8 yards. High mobility, this is going to be one of your main mobility uses, as you can end up seeing. Uh, it's going to basically allow you to go over, and then you can end up charging right on back, get back into combat, Colossus Smash, Overpower, just basically get in there and do what you need to do. Not a whole hell of a lot going on with it though. So with this, we'll move on. Heroic Throw, just throw your weapon at the enemy, and it's going to generate a high amount of threat, so basically if you need to do a range pull, and you need to kind of help out with separating, this may end up being a good way to end up doing it, as long as the tank doesn't hit it, because then you'll never pull it off unless you taunt. Intimidating Shout, instant 1.5 minute cooldown, causes targeted enemy to cower in fear and up to 5 additional enemies within 8 yards to flee. Targets are disoriented for 8 seconds. Really, this is a, this is just a general wonky CC that I haven't seen a lot of people use in PvE in a long time. Uh, this is more for, I guess, I don't know. I really don't know why they kept it. Uh, PvP may end up using it a bit more. I haven't PvP'd on a warrior in a long, 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 long time. So, that may be it. But in a PvE world, this really doesn't do a whole hell of a lot. Mortal Strike, a vicious strike that deals high physical damage and reduces the effectiveness of healing on the target for 10 seconds. It does say 5.56 second recharge, but that's because of talent I have. Normally that would just be the cooldown, but the cooldown is reduced by haste. Overpower, it's back, but it's a talent. We'll go over that in the talents. Pummel, it's still here. This is your normal interrupt. Rend, it's back, <laughs> and it has it's here as a talent. Yeah, it's actually an applied rend and not a, you know, thundershock or whatever the hell it was before. Thunderclap. So, this is still here. This is a talent. We'll talk about it more in the actual talent. Shockwave, talent, slam. Your uh, last bottom priority item here. 15 rage, and it does a small amount of physical damage. I mean, it's half of what Mortal Strike is. Actually, a little less than half. This is actually the bottom of your priority list, but it is going to be in there. Taunt is still here, and again, like mentioned, if you need to end up pulling something from ranged, or you need to pull it off the tank, to separate it for some sort of wonky mechanic, this is going to still be here. Victory Rush, strike the target, causing decent amount of physical damage and healing you for 30% of your maximum health. Only usable within 20 seconds after you kill an enemy that yields experience or honor. This has worked the same for a long, long time, and basically this is good, great for chain pulling. As you kill one target, you're going to be able to end up healing up and go and kill another one. It's just awesome for open world, and it's also awesome for, well, many reasons. I mean, getting being able to heal yourself for 30% of your maximum health after killing something, that just makes you brutal. Warbreaker, your artifact ability. And what this is going to do, a one-minute cooldown, it's going to stomp the ground, causing a ring of corrupted spikes to erupt upwards, dealing moderate shadow damage, and applying the Colossus Smash effect to all nearby enemies. Now, the thing about this is, it works in AoE situations. If you need that burst down damage on a one minute cooldown, you can use this and just AoE cleave the shit out of everything. Or, if you're having single target issues with actually getting the procs for your Colossus Smash, you can kind of fidge the window a little bit with it on this one minute cooldown to give you help. And I'm going to show you this ability. They actually finally added in an artifact, uh, the artifacts animation. And if you watch, there it is. I mean, it's pretty neat looking. It's got a decent little range area, but you'll notice that it also put the Colossus Smash up there, and it looks alright, but it's, uh, it's a decent ability, and again, like I said, if you're having issues, you can really fidget this thing just correctly to end up giving you that extra Colossus Smash window, so you're not playing the whole RNG game 100%. You do have a way of actually controlling it a bit. Whirlwind, it's still here, obviously. Unleashes a whirlwind of steel, striking all enemies within 8 yards for right around 30,000 physical damage. Not horrible. It's going to be one of your main AoE players, especially after you do a cleave and you hit 5 targets and that's, you know, double damage. I mean, that's going to be great. So here's your mastery. Colossal Might, 
passive increases the damage of your Colossus Smash by 56% and causes it to increase damage you deal to the target by an additional 56. Normally it's 15%, but thanks to this, it's now currently sitting at 71. And really, it's solid damage all the way through and through. Season Soldier, while wielding a two-handed melee weapon, which is always, you deal 10% increased damage. Tactician. Okay, so everyone was worried about the slam spam back in alpha. So what has this changed into? No longer a slam spam. You have a 0.65% chance per rage spent to reset the remaining cooldown on Colossus Smash and Mortal Strike. Not just Colossal Smash, but Mortal Strike also. So you're always going to have that Mortal Strike up to where it can end up giving you this additional damage buffer. So no longer having a slam spam. In fact, you hardly ever even hit slam. Except for general, you know, and everything else is on cooldown, what do I end up hitting? This is way better than what there was, but it does end up playing in quite a bit more to what talents you're going to be using. And the reason for this, we'll go over that right now in the talents. Alright, looking at the talents, and like I mentioned, the very first one here, level 15, Dauntless Passive, your abilities cost 20% less rage. Although this is going to give you a better chance of working with your other abilities, it's not going to end up helping you out all that much, as 20% less rage is also 20% less chance of you proccing your Colossus Smash, proccing Tactician basically, to where you get your Mortal Strike and your Colossus Smash. This ability actually works against you if you're going for the full window. There's another ability down here, Titanic Might, which would probably be better to go with Dauntless because you're not worried about constantly having to worry about that proc. As aware of this thing, uh, just read it real quick, Titanic Might's passive increases the duration of Colossus Smash by 16 seconds but reduces its effectiveness by 50%. You're not as worried about that window but you're not getting as much damage either. There's a few ways you can end up specking through this. I went more for the burst windows and uh, just general damage and abilities over everything else, going for the rage spent, and a little bit more of a haste build than anything else. I wish I had more haste because the rage generation was still a little bit low, but that's just me. So, overpower. The ability that I took, it's instant, it's 10 rage, it's back, overpowering the enemy causing high amounts of physical damage, cannot be blocked, dodged, or parried, and has a 60% increased chance to critically strike. All your melee attacks have a chance to activate overpower. Really a nice piece here. Sweeping strikes, if you're looking for additional cleave, mortal strike and execute hit a second nearby target. Level 30, you have shockwave. Now the reason why I took this was not for the damage, but on a 40 second cooldown with a chance of reducing the cooldown in half if you hit three or more targets, this stun just plays out very nicely in five mans and controlling mobs. It works out really well. And it gives a, a good damage buffer. So if you see the tank taking a lot of damage, healers struggling to catch up, you can pop this thing, stun them all out, and that'll end up helping out the whole group instead of just yourself. Stormbolt's still here. This is basically like, uh, what is it, Hammer of Justice? The Paladin uh, stun? Yeah. But it does very little physical damage and stuns the target for 4 seconds on a 30 second cooldown. Th there's no modifier left on Stormbolt. Really kind of sucks that it's not there because that was an amazing ability having that 400% increased damage on top of it. But it doesn't do that anymore. It's just a stun. Double time passive increases the maximum number of charges on charge by 1 and reduces its cooldown by 3 seconds. This played out very nicely also. More in a boss situation to where if you gotta jump away and you, you know if you're having tr trouble struggling with rage. You can run away a little ways, charge back in, and this is going to give you 20 rage to where you can automatically go into a mortal strike or whatever seems to be next on the priority list. Plays out really damn well, but at the same time, hopefully if you end up getting enough haste and your melee swings are a little bit higher, you won't have to worry about this as much. Level 45, Fervor of Battle. Whirlwind deals 40% increased damage to your primary target. This is not like the Fury one. This is more if you have to cleave you know focus one target and still cleave the rest of them this is going to work fine in an aoe situation where you have a focused target still as for like on the fury wire to where it works in the single target rotation it does not rend is back 15 rage wounds the target causing 56,045 bleed damage over 15 seconds it's still a very solid bleed and it works out very nicely also 15 rage 
it's one rage per second if you end up breaking it down, but it also ends up playing nicely in the fact that you want to spend your rage to end up getting more Colossal Smash procs. Avatar, instant, 1.5 minute cooldown. Transform into a Colossus for 20 seconds, causing you to deal 20% increased damage and removing all roots and snares. Short burst window. This is going to line up very nicely uh, with some Colossus Smash procs. If you end up lining this up, you're going to just do more additional damage in one of those areas. And it really, it'll end up helping out quite a bit. Level 60, Second Wind, passive, restores 6% health every one second when you have not taken damage for 5 seconds. This is great uh, for questing. This is great out in the open world, in a dungeon, just about anywhere. Uh, if there's not a lot of ticking AoE, this is going to work out just fine. It's going to help your healer out because it may not seem like a lot, but 6% of your health every one second is quite a bit. This helps out a ton. If you've got a healer that's kind of weak, yeah, you may want to just step back, let this heal you up, and then continue back in, which I've done multiple times. So the next one's going to be Bounding Stride. This is going to end up giving you a bit more mobility as it reduces the cooldown on Heroic Leap by 15 seconds. And Heroic Leap now also increases your run speed by 70% for 3 seconds. If you need to get the hell out of something, this is going to be a good way to do it. Defensive Stance. It's back. It's instant. It's a 10 second cooldown. A defensive combat state that reduces all damage you take by 20% and all damage you deal by 10% last until cancelled. This is going to be kind of a weird situation. Uh, progression bosses, this is not going to help you at all. They're just basically going to destroy you and uh, leave your body for the ants. That's basically it. Now, where I see this is possibly maybe on trash pulls where if you lose somebody you might be able to end up staying alive or like swapping it back and forth for certain cooldowns. Or if there's a large ticking AoE situation or you can give up that damage. I don't see a lot of actual PvE use on this unless you're really needing that damage reduction. And there's not a lot of areas to where you're going to want to give up your damage for that damage reduction. Unless it's a situation where, okay, if I stand in this, it's going to kill me. I need to move. That's going to be the general. But in a actual standstill situation, if it's ticking damage most of the time, healers are going to be able to take care of that. And with that, level 75, in for the kill, passive, Mortal Strike generates 40 rage when used against targets that are below 20% health. This is awesome for execute ranges. This is going to give you that 40 rage that you need on execute to begin with. And where is that going to end up leaving you? Well, hey, you're always going to have that 40 rage to dump into execute right off the bat. The way this plays out it's pretty solid but it's only good for the bottom 20 percent a lot of your five man but well not a lot of your five man bosses but there are a good amount of five man bosses that like wrath of ashar it's constantly sub 20 percent and then you've got odin and helia which never get below 80 percent so you kind of have a mix match of which way to end up going with this very situational and then you've got mortal combo it felt great in all situations mortal strike now has a maximum of two charges it's just nice to end up having that additional charge if you've got the rage you end up spending 20 rage is what it costs normally so you're looking at 40 rage to dump both of them and it plays well in the colossal smash window and then you have focus rage okay so 1.39 second cooldown 15 rage focus your rage on the next mortal strike increasing its damage by 50 percent stacking up to three times unaffected by the global cooldown if you have the rage to burn, basically what this is going to do is it's going to improve the damage of the next one. And you can, if you want to spend 45 rage, basically what you're looking at is 45 rage and then another 20 rage to actually cast Mortal Strike. So you're looking at a total of 65 rage to end up using 150% damage Mortal Strike. This is 40 rage and you're going to get an additional charge which is basically going to be like using this one at a hundred percent so 30 this is 50 rage to end up doing what this one will end up doing just on two different abilities I really I really don't see where the benefits at except for the one global cooldown that you don't end up using so really it's a toss-up on what you want to end up playing if you want to build the focus rage setup 
it's going to use a rage it's going to give you a chance to unlock that colossal smash window but at the same time there's not a lot of benefit unless you're building up to possibly just get that one swing in that possible killer swing to end up uh maybe killing a healer off in pvp or something but mortal combo this is going to be two abilities it's going to be less than what this would end up costing in the long run and again i mean rage spent is going to give you more chance of building that colossal smash window but having two mortal mortal strikes is also going to be pretty beneficial at a less cost 90 deadly calm passive battle cry also reduces the rage cost of your abilities by 100 percent for the duration and this is pretty decent but again you're looking at that no rage use this is going to be great for doing some solid damage in that short window uh, every one minute. But at the same time, this is just a very... There's no chance of actually getting a proc for your Colossus Smash during this window either. Trauma, passive slam and whirlwind now cause the target to bleed for 20% additional damage over 6 seconds. Multiple uses accumulate increased damage. Now, I didn't see myself using slam very often, but when I did, this did a very mediocre amount of damage. Where it really played off was in the AoE side of it, if I had to Whirlwind, especially after getting a 5 person cleave off, it really played off decently. So, that was decent, but not so much. And then you've got Titanic Might, and we talked about this once already, to where it's going to completely change the gameplay of this spec, and basically you're going to want to look more, possibly at a crit spec than anything with this window as it where you're not going to generate as much rage and you're just going to be constantly in the you should constantly be in the colossus smash window with this as it increases it by 16 seconds which makes it 24 seconds of uptime off of one cast if you're playing this with a minimal rage spec with dauntless or something this is going to definitely end up being more of a constantly in, but doing a more balanced damage instead of fishing you know working for the burst windows and trying to get it this takes a lot of the rng out of it but it also ends up taking a lot of the damage out of it and with that level 100 anger management passive every 10 rage you spend reduces the remaining cooldown on battle cry by one second again this plays well into the actual proc fishing it worked really decent on uh you know refreshing battle cry and it gave you more chances to line up your colossal smash windows with your battle cry and it just felt really solid on the damage but i did test out opportunity strikes a bit more than i did with this one because this is fairly cut and dry and i wanted to see where opportunity strikes would actually last overall this was a pretty solid amount of damage and what it was going to do was your melee abilities have up to a 60 percent chance based on the target's missing health to trigger an extra attack that deals 20,000 physical damage. Doesn't seem like a lot, but it's pretty decent. Now it says 60% chance based on the target's missing health. They don't say which way it's going from. Does it increase as it goes down or does it reduce as it goes down? They don't really end up saying. I'm going to guess, though, as a, from what I've seen in the progression of this, uh, and taking a look at the over, or not overpower, but at the opportunity strikes, I did see it proc more often as the enemy got lower through logs and that's just that's the way it ends up going even though it doesn't end up showing it the lower the health the higher chance it has then you have ravager ravager is still here it's gonna replace blade storm and it's got a cool new little animation it throws a whirling weapon at the target location that inflicts a high amount of damage to all all enemies within eight yards over 6.5 seconds now one thing about this it does a little bit less than what Bladestorm actually does but it's on a one minute cooldown instead of 1.5 minute cooldown and you actually get the still attack during this and we'll, we'll go ahead and show you but this is what the new animation looks like and it's pretty damn cool I mean that that's basically it and it's gonna continue doing damage it'll hit uh, what is it like 10 times it, it's or damage to all enemies within eight yeah well, whatever it does a decent amount of damage while you're just sitting there if you're needing to cleave something down and then continue with your aoe this is going to be a solid aoe choice but with this let's go ahead and move on to the artifact so here we are taking a look at the skins stromkar the warbreaker your base model 
We'll let it spin around here just a little bit so you can get a good look at it. It's a decent looking sword. Pretty solid. Got some good color skins. Then you got Vengeance of the Fallen. A bit better. You fill out that hole that was in the front with an actual like bull ring. And then you've got the particles spinning around with it. It's a, it's a good looking sword all the way through and through. We'll let this spin just a little bit more. But you can see like the water and stuff going through the middle. Pretty solid animations. And then Flame Reaper. It's decent. I enjoy it. It's a bulky model. It's got a very heavy Ulduar presence. And it actually kind of looks like it's got Ignis's pot down here at the bottom. You see it? Ignis's pot. And then you've got like the lava or fell fire flowing down into it. Really cool looking. And then Rass Edge. I swear I've seen this model before. It looks a lot like, I believe it's the BC sword that was out. And it almost looks like it's just been a reskinned version of that one. But it's still a good looking piece. And these are going to be your PvP models, and this is Rass Edge. So all in all, not bad. But with this, let's go ahead and move on to the actual traits. Alright, so... Here we are looking at the traits. Warbreaker, rank 101. This is your ability, and it's a one minute cooldown. We did talk about this in the abilities, but we'll mention it again. And basically, it's going to do an AoE shadow spikes all the way around for about 40,000 damage at this level, and it applies a Colossus Smash effect to all nearby enemies. It's great in AoE situations, and it's also great for breaking the RNG Icebreaker with Colossus Smash if you're not getting a lot of uh, procs with it. You can definitely end up increasing your damage uh, and taking a little bit of control every minute with this ability on a boss fight. First thing out the door though is Thoradin's Might, rank 101. Increases damage dealt by Mortal Strike by 15%. That's a great starting ability. Crushing Blows, rank 1 of 3. Increases damage dealt by Slam by 5, 10, or 15%. Will of the First King, 1 rank. Whirlwind Critical Strikes generate 2 Rage. That's kind of nice because it's any critical strike. So if you hit 10 mobs and all 10 of them end up uh, getting a crit on it, guess what? You just got 20 rate or, yeah, 20 range. <laughs> uh, exploit the weakness. Rank 0 of 3, Tactician's chance to trigger is increased as if you spent 10, 20, or 30% more range. This is great because it gets you an additional Colossal Smash window, and it also ends up getting you a free Mortal Strike. Shattered Defenses, rank 01. After using Colossus Smash, your next Mortal Striker Execute gains 30% increased critical strike chance and deals 30% additional damage. This is an awesome controlled ability. Now, it's going to be all based around your Colossus Smash, but if you end up using this thing, you're going to see some pretty solid increase in numbers on your next Mortal Striker Execute, and it's going to give you a justification on which button you press after this ability depending on where you're at. Sub 20% obviously execute. Mortal Strike, that's going to be above 20%. Death Blow, 0, 03, increases the critical strike chance of execute by 5, 10, or 15%. Solid ability. Defensive Measures, rank 0, 01, while Die by the Sword is active, damage taken is reduced by an additional 5%. One against many. Cleave increases damage dealt by your next Whirlwind by an additional 2% for each target hit, and that's going to be 2, 4, or 6%. Touch of Zakaj, rank 0, 3. Stromkar heals you for 3% of the damage you deal with Mortal Strike, and that's going to be 3, 6, and most likely 10%. Uh, this is going to be great passive healing just to kind of help your healers a bit. Unending Rage increases maximum rage by 10, 20, or 30 Void Cleave, rank 01. When Cleave strikes more than three targets, Stromkar releases a burst of void energy dealing shadow damage to all nearby enemies. It's not a lot of shadow damage, but a little bit more AoE is always going to be decent in those situations. Focus in Battle, rank 01. Increases damage dealt by Colossus Smash by 25%. Now this is going to be the actual Colossus Smash damage and not the ability itself but the da upfront damage that Colossal Smash does. Colossal Smash really isn't there for the damage, but it does hit pretty solid, and we'll go over that here in a bit. Many will fall. Rank 03 increases damage dealt by Whirlwind by 5, 10, or 15%. Precise Strikes, rank 0 of 3. Colossal Smash reduces the rage cost of your next Mortal Striker Execute by 15%, and that's going to be 15, 30, or 45 
45 percent is nothing to joke about i mean it basically if you take it at the 50 percent mark it's gonna make it it's gonna be like a if you take it at a 50 percent mark that would make mortal strike 10 rage so this is gonna be what like 12 rage compared to the 20 so that's gonna be pretty solid and then you've got the execute which is normally to get a good solid execute is gonna be 40 rage to get the full benefit this is gonna make it just over 20 so again this is gonna play out pretty nicely to end up capping out it's gonna help out with your rage and getting the extra damage but at the same time it's kinda gotta wax and wane to where the less amount of rage that you end up using the less chance of getting another class of smash to proc is gonna happen so Corrupted Blood of Zakaj, rank 01, for 5 seconds after activating Battle Cry, Stromkar radiates shadowy energy, causing all your attacks to deal an additional 20% damage as shadow over 6 seconds. So additional damage during Battle Cry, basically. It's going to allow you over that 6 second window. Battle Cry is only 5, but if you're pooling correctly for Battle Cry, you'll end up pooling up, you'll end up using Battle Cry, and then you'll end up doing just busting as many high damage abilities as you can. And it's going to do an additional 20% damage as Shadow. Tactical Advance. Rank 0 3. When Heroic Leap lands, you gain 10% increased armor and a chance to parry for 4 seconds. Now, this is going to be 10, 20, or 30% increased armor and chance to parry. And I doubt that it's going to mess with the actual time too much. Just the additional, uh, the increase, the percentage increase. How about that, guys? Uh, you do have an Iron Artifact, a Blood Artifact, and a Shadow Artifact, which is currently locked, that you can end up working with. With this, let's go ahead and move right on to what everybody always wants to see, and that's going to be the gameplay. Yes, the Arms Warrior. Now, what are we looking at here? Well, since it's a little bit more on the complicated side for single target, we'll go ahead and start with AoE. Now, you've got multiple talents to definitely increase your damage through AoE, but what are we looking at baseline? Well, baseline, you've got a few abilities that are going to really benefit. You have Cleave, which for each target hit up to 5, your next whirlwind is going to deal 20% more damage. So obviously you're going to want to use Cleave on cooldown with 3 plus targets, mind you. You're, I'm considering AoE for this spec, 3 plus targets, but you're going to want to use Cleave first and then end up going into whirlwind on almost every situation as you build up. And then you've got Warbreaker. Which on a one minute cooldown, this thing's going to give Colossus Smash to everything around. Very nice to end up seeing. The other ability that you still have on a 1.5 minute cooldown, which does a hell of a lot of damage still, is going to be Bladestorm, unless you spec Ravager. Now, Bladestorm is still doing very nice, and I'm glad to see that they baked this into the actual abilities and didn't make it a talent choice, because whenever they make something like this a talent choice, it usually ends up winding up badly. So... Again, you're looking at a pretty solid amount of damage all the way through and through in an AoE situation. Now, in a single target situation, let's go ahead and line this up. Started boss fight. You do have your general cooldown, which is going to be Battle Cry. And what this is going to be best used for is when you do have some energy pooled up, start of the fight or whatever you're going for. If you took anger management, obviously you're going to want to keep that thing on cooldown as much as possible because the more rage that you're spending, the better chance you're going to end up, yeah, you're going to get it off cooldown faster. So with this being said, Battle Cry is greatly timed out, one minute cooldown, and you are going to want to have at least 50 rage pooled before you end up using this in most situations, and usually you want to time it with Colossus Smash. That window on Colossus Smash is your bread and butter where you want to end up being at and then you have a general priority list now depending on how you spec if you took the talents that I ended up mentioning at the beginning where what I showed you you're gonna have overpower you're gonna have rend uh, you're gonna have two mortal strikes so a lot of this is going to play a little bit differently depending on how you spec what am I looking at though I'm looking at what I ended up running and what I would end up doing was I would charge in that's automatic 20 rage I'd more than likely end up hitting battle cry right off at the beginning because the fights don't last that long anyways. Try and get two of them in there. It was just the way to end up playing. So I'd hit that, and then uh, being an orc, I'd hit the Blood, Blood Fury just to get my buffs out of the way. Colossus Smash right at the beginning. If I had Overpower up, it took top priority. I would make sure Rend was up, and then go into Mortal Strike. 
with your melee swings this played out very nicely and most of the time by the time i got done with this nine times out of ten i would have colossus smash back up before i even had slam available to end up hitting and it felt really solid now there a lot of times i would end up having no rage whatsoever which was the disappointing side because again not a lot of haste to begin with if you end up getting the uh getting more haste you're gonna have more melee swings and you'll see there's a few times i actually back out of the group and recharge back into the boss to try and improve my damage that's not something that we should end up having to do to gimmick to dish, get additional damage in there but it's something that i did end up having to play with now with the colossus smash window if you do end up running a long streak of not being able to keep this thing up what you're looking at is warbreaker even on a single target fight this is great on breaking the monotony of bad rng on a one minute cooldown and I did notice once I'd end up using this, more than likely I'd end up getting another proc right behind it so I could back to back the Colossus Smash Chains. It was a really nice feeling to end up getting this additional damage. And if you end up timing Colossus Smash right, it does hit extremely hard. And you can actually time it on the last second of the window to end up giving itself its own physical damage increase and help with its damage quite a bit also. Now, when we look at this, this spec is extremely mobile. Uh, you've got Heroic Leap to get you out, you've got Charge to get you in, and it's just insane with the way this thing can end up moving. On a single target fight though, where you're looking at, with, I mean, I just mentioned mobility, that's obviously going to get you in and out of different situations. But what you're really looking at on a single target fight is concentrated right up the boss's butthole, trying to do as much damage as possible. Um, Colossus Smash, guaranteed. You want to keep this buff up as much as possible. The uptime needs to be solid. If not, you're doing zero damage. You want to be able to get those melee swings off, and I keep mentioning haste quite a bit, but that is going to be where your rage is coming from unless you cheese it with jumping out and charging back in. That is the only additional area outside of melee swings that actually help with rage generation. Uh, if you took it, Ren, keep it up. Overpower is always going to be top priority due to the fact that it hits almost as hard as what Mortal Strike does. But it's got a 60% increased chance to critically strike. Cannot be blocked, dodged, or parried. And it's only 10 rage. It's half the rage of what Mortal Strike is. Therefore, it puts it top of priority list. Mortal Strike would be next after that. And then Slam would be at the bottom. All in all, this spec does really great, and it only just takes off even better after sub-20% on a boss. After that sub-20%, that opens up a whole new world of execute as to where it costs 10 rage. You want to try and use this more around the 40 rage mark to get the best benefit out of it as to where it, it really, really shines. I mean, you're looking at 40 rage, this thing is going to hit for a almost double of what mortal strike will almost double so you no longer want to do mortal strike you want to basically pull this up and actually replace mortal strike with execute sub 20 percent overpower still a great ability to end up throwing in there even though it is 10 rage and then obviously colossus smash if you get a proc on it pull up as much as possible colossus smash and then get as many executes in then in that window as you possibly can with this guy's there's not a lot that's really changed since the alpha video except for the slam spam. But this thing's playing pretty damn solid. It really is. It is a little slow on rage regen, but I, again, I can't stress it enough. With the haste getting a little more attack speed going on, you're going to see a dynamic difference on this spec compared to what it is right now to where it's only running... I believe at this point in time, I'm only running with 8% haste. If I got that up to about 15, 20%, this thing would be taken off like a bat out of hell. So with that, let's go ahead and move on, guys, and take a look exactly where the damage is coming from in the logs. So here we are taking a look at the uh, the logs. And as you can see, we got a huge amount of damage right off at the beginning, and that's going to be because this is where I had Battle Cry up, and this is where most of the critical strikes ended up going. Good solid amounts of damage. And then you can see we start hitting a lot of extra damage in our execute range. And just so you know, this is actually Fenrir. Um, 
the last, or not the last boss, but the dog boss in Halls of Valor. Yeah, that place. So, what you're looking at, this is the Mortal Strike. Good amount of damage. Only 9 hits, and it's top damage. And a lot of that's due to the timing. Uh, normally, this thing only hits for about 50k standard. And as you can see, if you look, the max hits, I mean, 75,000 on a normal hit, and then it crit almost all the damn time. 52% uh, of the time, half the time. And it really solid amounts of damage especially if you get this thing lined up in the actual window of Colossus Smash and it crits it does really well and then execute obviously this thing takes off for sub 20% damage uh, sub 20% on the boss this thing's damage is quite insane and again it hit normally uh, the average was 85,000 then it crit for an average of 125,000 but it did not crit as often as, as it should have then you have Overpower, still, again, very solid ability uh, with the Rage Generation. It really puts out there. It does a good amount of damage. Opportunity Strikes. For a talent that's passive and does a good solid amount of damage, you're looking at almost 11% damage, 14 different hits, but the average hit was 20,000 and the average crit was 46,000. So, good solid build on there, and then the Rend, uh, three applications, 15 ticks, and each tick was averaging about 23,000 on there. Melee, pretty high up, only 20 melee swings though, in a, in a minute 10, uh, almost a minute 20 fight, and that's what you're looking at, is only 20 swings, and if that were a little bit higher, my rage generation would be higher. Now, unfortunately during this one, uh, with all the reset stuff that's been going on, it did turn off the advanced logging, so I can't pull it up and show you exactly where the rage generation's at uh, due to this. And I didn't notice it until after the uh, this was all taken care of. But it did end up resetting the advanced logging, so I do not have the rage pathing that I wanted to show. But what you're looking at here is this is going to be your general for building rage. Only 20 hits, which really sucked unfortunately and then I had a couple charges in there back and forth um, to increase on my rage generation also which still wasn't a lot and then you have Colossus Smash now only for for eight percent of your damage and only four hits you're looking at an average of 68,000 damage off of this with 50% crit chance now you look at those crit averages 101,000 out of a single ability 35,000 this was with the resets normally the resets would be every 45 seconds which would be right in here now Colossus smash you can see I started off with Colossus smash and then we got a reproc right here so about 25 seconds in and then you ended up getting another one like right over here so I mean generally it's it's a solid amount of damage it really is and you can get a lot of procs as long as you're spending more rage this is a really interesting spec because the more proc chance that you get on this ability the more rage that you have to spend the more rage you have to generate and that's why I'm really leaning more towards haste as a more solid stat for this spec just for the simple fact of the rage generation uh, trauma again this doesn't do a whole hell of a lot because you're seven hits with um, slam it's not a lot but for it just being a blade off of slam itself it's decent it's not a whole great amount uh, warbreaker this is gonna be your artifact ability and you're looking at additional colossal smash window on this now let me see if I can find it real quick it's gonna be in the green the dark green uh, right there so there was the one time that I ended up using it so this whole beginning window where you see it and then I kinda died down right here and the reason for this dying down is uh well this was one of the areas where Fenrir actually ran away and then you've got another one and then back in the execute so these are your like little runaway deals where Fenrir runs if you know the fight Victory Rush, because we ended up getting a dog stuck in there somehow and murdered it off. And then Heroic Leap uh, for just escaping, getting out of the group. 
So there's one. Let's go ahead and swap this over to... We'll go God King Skovald. He was another one that had an execute range. Odin, on the other hand, no execute, no, no damage, unfortunately, with this spec. So here we are. Mortal Strike. Top of the top dog again. Overpower. Huge damage out of this ability. 100% crit. And again, that's because it's got 60% chance to crit anyways. Uh, on top of whatever your other crits are. Rend. Real high amounts of damage. Execute. 5 hits. 80% crit. Huge amounts of damage. Melee. 23 hits yet again. I mean, minute 20. You can see where the execute spams are at. You can see exactly where my mortal strike damage goes up but that's gonna be because right after each colossal smash colossal smash and you'll see we had five casts only four hits so which uh, is unfortunate but that ends up happening because uh, I think I ended up casting this right as he was throwing his shield up and I ended up missing with it but it does end up happening 75 percent crit chance hits pretty damn hard for a single ability trauma and then with uh, warbreaker obviously at the bottom it doesn't do a whole hell of a lot of damage but that colossus smash buff is what you're looking at filling in and that was let me see if I can find it it's gonna be like a bluish gray opportunity strikes hell it's in there somewhere Either way, it, it's going to be in there at some point to where I didn't end up getting a proc and it's just a good filling piece. Uh, there it is, right there. So there you see the extra damage coming out of it and then the Mortal Strike damage increase. Mortal Strike, filler, and then you get it yet again. Mortal Strike, Mortal Strike. And then you'll get the Colossus Smash windows that are showing up again and the spikes. So you do end up playing a little bit on the spikiness, but it is fairly balanced overall through a longer fight until you end up getting your executes and uh, you line up with Battle Cry and it does just a really solid amount of damage. So guys, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's here for a little bit of the education, more for the enjoyment, and if you did, as always, thanks for watching.